At the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant, a new record has been broken, but not the kind you want to see. Robots sent inside the structure, which houses reactor number three, one of those where the fuel melted down in mid-March, measured radiation on the first floor at a level of 1,600 millisieverts per hour. This means that any human being who spent a few hours in that location would receive a dose of radiation sufficient to end one's life after a few highly unpleasant weeks. These findings underline that the situation at the Fukushima plant remains dangerous, even if the situation is gradually improving overall. The Japanese public remains concerned. It's an extremely regrettable matter. I have two children in elementary school, and when I think about the fact that there may be some impact on them when they are out playing or something, it worries me. The government continues to promise that they will keep the public informed. Wrapping up the nuclear crisis is only one of the major challenges faced by the government. Another is to rebuild the devastated northeastern coastline. A U.S. $157 billion supplementary budget has been passed by the Diet, more than doubling the funds earmarked for tsunami reconstruction, as well as funding soil decontamination efforts in Fukushima. Lawmakers, even of the opposition parties, emphasized to press TV that the Japanese government needs to keep its focus on such domestic issues right now. We are in the middle of the most serious national crisis that we have faced in 60 years. The natural disaster, the nuclear accident, an extended period of deflation, an Asian society, and a major rise in the value of the yen. Before we even consider foreign policy issues like relations with the United States or Southeast Asia or whatever, we have to put our own country back on its feet. In light of the heavy blows that Japan has been receiving this year, that seems like eminently sensible advice. Michael Penn, Press TV, Tokyo. A Japanese government panel says a project to build an experimental fast breeder nuclear reactor should be thoroughly reviewed before a decision is made on its future. The seven-member panel focused on the country's nuclear projects on Sunday, the first day of its four-day policy screening. Some panel members said it would be difficult to gain public understanding for the resumption of the Monju project. They said it's not clear if the reactor can be put into commercial service by 2050 as originally planned. Some members also said the Monju project to build a fast breeder nuclear reactor should be scrapped and a next stage fusion reactor should be developed instead. The Monju reactor uses plutonium extracted from spent nuclear fuel to generate power and has been regarded as a prototype for Japan's next generation nuclear plant. The panel concluded that a budget of $29 million for next summer's test run of the Monju project should be cut along with various maintenance costs, except for the crucial portion. The panel concluded that a budget of $29 million for next summer's test run of the Monju project should be cut along with various maintenance costs, except for the crucial portion. The science ministry says it will consider the next step after seeing the results of the discussion by a panel of cabinet members on the country's nuclear policies. This person also has a second question, which is really interesting, I think. Is water the best coolant? Isn't there a liquid that could absorb heat more efficiently? Yeah, my father worked for Westinghouse, uh, and they were designing a liquid metal fast breeder reactor that used liquid sodium instead of water, because liquid sodium does a real good job of transferring heat. The problem with the sodium, when it reacts with water or air, it's explosive, uh, which makes it easy to find leaks in pipes and stuff, but it comes at kind of a high price. It's also very expensive. Fast breeder reactors are, are kind of like uh, racehorses as opposed to thermal. Workhorses, they're very finicky. It's very easy to lose control of a fast breeder reactor. So there's advantages to having liquid sodium remove the heat, but there's disadvantages of having less control over the reactor. And trying to meet that challenge was so expensive that all the countries that have tried fast breeder reactors have given up 
is too expensive for the, the electricity you generate. We almost have another break. Yeah. Uh, yep. right. um, Hang on, just one yes, other go thing. Ahead. You know, the, the flip side of that is that maybe we should look at something other than circaloid clay. Because it's stainless steel doesn't react with water to produce hydrogen. So maybe the industry needs to say, well, we should forget about using zircaloid cladding on our nuclear fuel. We need to look at a new metal to do that. The reason zircaloid was chosen is because uh, economically it makes a lot of sense. It has very high neutron economy. It doesn't eat neutrons, so you get more out of your core. Uh, but so it's about money. Zircaloid was chosen because it, it's the cheapest way to produce nuclear power. But there were reactors that had stainless steel before that, and there are other alternatives to zircaloid, which would avoid that explosion when you have cladding in touch with water. Japan's diet has now enacted a third supplementary budget totaling more than $150 billion for the current fiscal year through March 2012. The supplementary budget bill won approval by the upper house on Monday with a majority vote and there was a pretty wide margin there. The bill earlier passed the more powerful lower house. The budget aims to finance post-disaster reconstruction and to also counter the strong yen. It's setting aside $20 billion for a new fund from which grants will be offered to local governments to support reconstruction programs. $19 billion is earmarked for the rebuilding of schools, roads, and other infrastructure. $3.2 billion will be spent on radiation decontamination in areas affected by the Fukushima nuclear disaster. Now, in order to counter the effects of the historically high yen, the budget allocates $6.5 billion to subsidize firms that open new domestic plants and research facilities. The government is making it easier for disaster survivors to get into low-rent public housing. Only people whose homes were completely destroyed were originally eligible. But the government is relaxing the conditions. Now, people whose homes were only partly damaged but have since been deemed beyond repair will also be able to move in. At least 16,000 units of public housing will eventually be available in areas hit by the disaster. Today is Wednesday, September the 24th, and this is my last broadcast. Yesterday I announced on this program that I was going to commit public suicide, admittedly an act of madness. Well, I'll tell you what happened. I just ran out of bullshit. All right, cut him off. Leave him on. The only pine tree that survived the tsunami in the city of Rikuzen, Takata, is dying. There were 70,000 pine trees on a scenic part of the coastline before the tsunami. The sole survivor became a symbol of reconstruction. Conservation groups tried to save the tree by putting steel plates around its roots and pumping salt water out of the ground. But they say the roots are so rotten that the tree can't absorb water and nutrients anymore. Notice how weird it starts to get when you just stop breathing? <laughs> 